You're not giving me a break. You're harassing me at this harassing point. I, I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? Huh? Where'd you get this? That's issue two. Issue two. Federal Bureau of Investigation badge? I do feel like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, so call 911. Call, I need medical attention right now. Look. Hey, turn around. Let me see your hands. Turn around. Let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Sir, don't knock me face down on the ground. Face down now. Imagine being a trained federal agent only to find yourself on the wrong side of the law due to some questionable decisions made by some stupid local cops. Here are five real world examples of situations where cops try to mess with FBI agents. Stories that will leave you not only stunned, but also wondering about the state of law enforcement we have today. But first, please hit the like button, as YouTube is not a fan of these kind of videos. Now, let's get started. Kicking off today's episode is this rather hilarious, but sad video of two cops in Rochester, Minnesota, approaching a South Sudanese man claiming he looked like a suspect they have been searching for. But they were unaware of what fate had in store for them, and the situation took a sudden 180 when they realized the man was an undercover FBI agent. Let's take a look at how the complete situation unfolded. You've been your racial first part, oh, am I? Yeah, you're wrong. You're assuming I'm someone that I'm not. You Get out of my face, man. You guys are harassing me. Yes, you guys are. Hey, that's you're right. fing harassing me. Yes, you, yes, you are. No, no. no. He's harassing me. Why are you harassing me? You're assuming I'm someone I'm not. Okay, if you're not, then. No, 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 no. I'm free to go. Okay. Us. Oh, am I being detained? Yeah, you are. For what? Because I think you have more. You think? Yeah. That's an illusion. That's, that's an okay. illusion. You think? Stand up your hands. I'm not here. For what? I don't have a horse. You're very wrong. Let me get this straight. So, our two wise cops here think that the guy is a suspect because he just happens to look like someone who committed a crime. A hunch, you could say. Not to mention the fact that the guy seemed pretty confident that the cops had him wrong and went even a step further, accusing the overzealous cops of racially profiling him. What makes it even more shocking is that these dum-dums also believe that that's enough to detain him. Don't these guys know anything about the law? Remember, the law requires cops to have reasonable suspicion that someone has committed a crime. And oh look, what do we have here? Must be based on more than a hunch. What this means is anything these cops did from here on was way beyond legal and was unconstitutional. No, you are wrong. What do you mean if you're wrong? You're wrong. You're wrong. All right. This is the second time I'm hearing this from the officer. If I am wrong, I am wrong? Think about it. It's one frightening statement that's both unprofessional and dangerous at the same time. If officers start throwing such excuses and logic in situations like these, you can only imagine what they would do if the stakes were high. This could easily turn out to be a nightmare for someone, if you ask me. I didn't do nothing. I for what? For what? Can you tell me for what? For what? I'm, I'm, I'm under arrest for what? No, no, no. If you got the wrong guy, I'm suing all of you guys. Let me get your card. Can I get your card? Can I get your card? Okay. I'm not standing up. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. I don't have any. Unfortunately for the cops, the encounter was filmed on a cell phone camera, and we can see how the man repeatedly kept calling them out on their mistake and pointed out that they didn't have a warrant to arrest him. Something these cops should have known already. But then, things quickly escalated when one of the officers tried to grab him. Hey, yo! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey officer! Oh, hey, hey, no, no, no! Hey, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Matter of fact, matter of fact, look at my ID. He got the wrong guy, I'm telling you. Several voices can be heard in the background, and it seems like they know the man and are telling the officers that they made a big mistake and they got the wrong guy. You guys don't got the wrong guy. You guys are stupid. That's not you. You guys are racial profile thinking I'm somebody. Take hey, some cuffs off. You guys really had nothing else to go to college for but be a cop and harass me to assume I'm somebody I'm not? My ID's in my back pocket. After the arrest, thinking it was a run-of-the-mill situation, this officer finally decided to follow up on the guy's request to check his ID. Watch, hey, watch, funny how, watch how funny this is. Little does he know, he's in for a shock. Oh, what does that say? What does that say? Oh! Wrong guy! Oh! Wrong guy! Wrong guy. Oh my god! Wrong guy. Turns out, the person in cuffs is not just any suspect. No, no, it's an FBI agent. Right here in the middle of a local law enforcement activity, and these cops are in big trouble. 
You can only imagine the cop's expression, utter shock. It's not every day you arrest someone and they flash an FBI badge in your face. Just notice how this arrogant cop shifts from constantly establishing direct eye contact with the supposed suspect to avoiding any eye contact entirely after inspecting the ID. No, get the f off me, dude. Okay, get off me, dude. Bro, you up. I need our cars. I need your supervisor over here. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. The agent goes on to reasonably explain the whole situation to the supervisor, who clearly looks uneasy at this point and is desperately looking for the nearest exit. Sir, can you please come here? Are you the supervisor? These guys are listening for a problem. They assume I'm someone that I'm not. I told them I'm not who they think I am. And they, still and they said, no, nope, you are. I'm, I'm positive you are. But as soon as the agent demands their IDs, he showed his true colors. I need their cards. I need your card. I need your card. I need, I need, I need your card. This is, this is, this is, this is, no, no. Yes, I request your card. Why is that? Bro, that was fucked up. Yeah. No, they serve the people. Yes, I'm the people. You guys serve us. So, I That's because they're corrupt as fuck. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay, I would like your card. Okay, yep. Like and I'm going to follow the support on you, you, and you. Instead of owning up to his men's mistake, as he should have, the supervisor chose to defend their actions, giving flimsy reasons for the whole screw up. Get them in, Sarge, will you? But seeing he had no choice but to obey the agent's demand, the IDs came out. First the supervisor, and then the two geniuses who started this whole fiasco. Is that how you guys work on this? You assume someone is someone, and that's it? That's all you guys need? Yeah? Oh my god, what is American game for? Guilty and cocky. It's a hell of a dangerous combination, folks. It's cops like these who sully the good name of the entire law enforcement agencies. Instead of admitting his fault, which he should have rightfully done, all we see here is a man who doesn't have an ounce of regret. Shame on you, officer. But then again, what can we expect when you're led by such supervisors? I will make a complaint on all three of you guys. That's fine. Do your job better. Okay. So if you want to make a complaint, you go make it. I will make a complaint. All right. See what I'm talking about? All I can say is that the entire event was nothing but a poor show of unprofessionalism and a lack of A, B, and Cs of basic law knowledge shown by these foolish cops. As far as silver linings go, at least no one got harmed in this case. Which is more than I can say for this FBI agent here. Can you run your body cam? I, I am now, because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent Adam. The FBI. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meeting me at the office. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the reporting device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. You might question why this FBI agent is asking the officer to cut off the recording device. Something doesn't add up here. Red flags for the FBI agent, right? Well, the answer is our special agent Hatton was actually investigating police corruption in the Franklin County Police Department. And as a part of this undercover operation, he asked the officer in the video, Mr. Rolf Gordon, to meet him at a random parking lot, perhaps to ask some questions related to the case. However, the officer didn't like the fact that the agent called his personal phone number instead of taking things through his office and grew skeptical of him despite the agent's disclosure of his credentials. Hey TJ, this guy is uh, telling me to turn my body camera off and telling me he's going to contact other people to get involved with this. Let me get his tag number real quick. He's got a radio and he's got credentials. Franklin, does that come back to any government agency? It just advises Advanced Wiring Company. Do you work for a Doesn't wiring company? It's a covert vehicle, sir. Did he seriously think it would? Of course, it's a covert vehicle. What kind of undercover FBI agent would drive in an FBI registered vehicle? like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yeah. did you get my phone number? I can't do that. That's a pretty dumb thing to ask from an FBI agent. Hey, if an FBI agent is investigating you, rest assured he knows your number, your address, your affairs, your wife's affairs. Hell, he might even know your breakfast, lunch, and dinner patterns, including what types of boxers you like to wear. 
It's also important to note here that Agent Hatton had valid reasons for seeking such an informal meeting with Deputy Gordon, as revealed later in the interaction when Agent Hatton subtly hints at his potential involvement in a more extensive inquiry into the sheriff's office that goes beyond the scope of the deputy's citation while conversing with his supervisor. You can't call anybody in the PD because the PD is just here backing this guy up. It's Franklin County that's holding him, so you have to call the sheriff to let him know that his deputies have been stopped here and are holding him. He's going to ask why. You're not going to be able to tell him. Hmm, the plot thickens. Anyway, the officer later goes on to detain him, giving sloppy reasons like, Oh, I don't trust you being an FBI agent, and you are being uncooperative. When in truth, he was the one who denied checking the agent's registration. Hey, you are detained at this time, sir. Hey, I don't think this guy's legit, man. But you're being very uncooperative with me. I, you asked me to come up here, you called my personal cell phone number. You, you can't tell me how you got it. Your vehicle is coming back to a wiring company, not the it's FBI. A covert vehicle. Okay. You Dude, get would mad. Would you like to see some registration? You get mad at me would because you, I turned my body like camera to, on. Would you like to see some registration? And you know a lot of stuff about me. Would you like to see the registration, sir? I, I don't really want anything from you at this point. My supervisor's on the way. Excellent. Uncooperative? Really? First, do your job as an officer. As the dilemma continued, Agent hadn't even showed his license and his badge for the second time to Officer Gordon, but somehow, Gordon remained unconvinced. Eventually, multiple supervisory officers arrived on the scene, but they were even worse than Officer Gordon and decided to arrest him and put him in the back of the patrol car. Not only this, they even decided to not roll down the windows or turn on the AC, and given the hot day in Florida, it was only inevitable that things didn't go well for Agent Hatton. Yes, sir. There, brother. Okay, okay. I'm All right, I'm turning it on right brother, now. Open the door. I can't breathe. Sir, I can't open the door. You're brother. being detained right now. As time passed, the agent started complaining, and in spite of his repeated plea, the cop continued to ignore him. You're burning me up, brother. I had the defroster on. No, you didn't. Brother, I need air. God almighty. All of a sudden, they receive a phone call that should put the entire event to rest. 33, go ahead. He is a, he is a kid. 10-4. All right, that's what I'm doing right now. Here we go. All the proof you need in the world. However, even after this, the officer chooses to retain the agent inside the patrol vehicle, despite receiving explicit confirmation that he is, indeed, an FBI agent. Instead of promptly following the given instructions to release him, the officers continue conversing about the situation, all the while the agent pleads for his release. It is only after an additional three minutes of entirely unnecessary conversation that the agent is finally allowed to exit the vehicle. But sadly, the damage was done. Call 911. Call, I need a medical attention right now. Call, call 911. Call 911. We're, we're releasing you right no, now, call sir. Call 911 now. Call 911. I need 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. After a further 10 minutes, the medics finally arrived and the cop explained the whole situation and said that the man complained about shortness of breath and vision loss. Started complaining of uh, shortness of breath, vision loss. In the hours after Hatton was released, FBI agents in brass descended on Apalachicola, meeting with Gordon and the sheriff to find out what happened and why. Both agencies later decided to put the incident in the rearview mirror, followed by Sheriff Smith's promise, and I quote that, both our agencies work together a lot better. Smith also agreed to the fact that they needed more training. But honestly, training or no training, that's no way to treat someone, let alone a fellow law enforcer. It's a great example of ego and how ego gets in the way of common sense. It also shows how sometimes police can take literally anything you say or do and turn it against you. Oh, and if you don't say anything, you're being uncooperative, and that's also grounds for suspicion. Fortunately, Despite what can only be characterized as disrespect and negligence from the officers, the agent did not sustain any significant injuries. However, the same cannot be said for ATF agent Burke, who was subjected to such mistreatment by the police that he found it necessary to file a lawsuit against them. On July 7, 2020, agent James Burke, a 16-year veteran of the ATF, was dispatched to a home on the 3300 block of Edgebrook Drive near Dublin, Ohio to confiscate a shotgun from a resident who was not permitted to have a firearm. 
but instead of letting him in, they closed the door in his face and called 911, reading Burke's badge number to the dispatcher. In Burke's mind, it was no big deal as he was frequently used to this verification process. What happened next was not only shocking to Burke, but to anyone who's watching this video. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. Sensing extreme aggression from the officer, Burke outright refuses to follow his orders to drop to the ground, seemingly determined to challenge the police's authority to frisk him for weapons. I'm a federal agent. I don't need to obey orders from the local police, he must have thought. But if that were the case, it would mean that any criminal could easily lie and say they're a federal agent to avoid doing what the police say. Even if Burke didn't seem dangerous, he should have just done what the police told him politely so they could quickly understand what was happening. Naturally, things escalated. I'm Why wouldn't you show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, okay. Burke. You didn't ask for it. He is at 335. Get on the ground, we'll figure it out. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here and doesn't have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine. Fine. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on the ground. I'm not getting on the ground. for things. I'm not getting on the ground. I'm pulling up. I got my ID. Do not reach for your waist. Despite Burke's best efforts to prove his identity to the officer, the officer continued to remain hostile and keep his gun drawn. Once the second officer arrived, the situation took a turn for the worse for Burke. Sir, don't argue, face down, on the ground, face down, now! Running out of corners, he had no choice but to comply with the officer's demands. The officers kept their firearms drawn at Burke for over 90 seconds before they very aggressively placed him under arrest. All the way. You got my IDs right here, left pocket. Left pocket. And we're going to put your arm on your back. Wait a sec. Do not resist. I'm not resisting. You're acting like a no, moron. Wait a second. Stop. Wait a second. Wait a Come second. On. No, don't do this. Wait a second. I got a medical condition. Get my license out of my pocket. Please. We're getting you secured first. Please, please, wait. No, no. Hold on, hold on. I'm hyperventilating. I don't. Please, sir. I'm, wait, I'm not. Stop resisting. Would you now. please get my ID out of my left pocket? Stop I'm resisting. You. My, my wife, please. Stop right here. Resist. Please get it. I got please. one cuff on. Sir, get your help me up. Just hold me up. Yeah. Sir, I can't do it. Check it Sir, stop resisting now. Please help me. But wait, the show isn't over yet. Apart from the uncanny aggression, these cops left no stone unturned in bullying Burke. During the forceful arrest, they repeatedly used a taser on him despite him being face down on the ground and not putting up any resistance. Please, Joe, get my, your taser out. My taser. My get your taser out. Friend. Get your taser out, Joe. No, don't do that, please. Sir. Don't make me tase you. Oh, oh, don't do that. Okay. Here. Get him cuffed. Get him cuffed. It is cuffed. Get him cuffed. Get him cuffed. In pain, Burke continued to tell the officers that he was a legit ATF agent out on a case and his ID was in his pocket. Regardless of the confirmation, the officer continued with the arrest and put him in the back of the patrol vehicle. Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No, you knew what you were doing. Sir, sir, calm down. Relax. Hold sir. It. Hey, guys, please. Just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car. No, we'll wait. talk later. Sir. Wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. No, I was trying to give you my creds. You no, didn't let me show them to you. never once tried. I did. Get wait, in the car. Wait, wait. wait now. Have a seat. Please. Wait, I got to breathe. Okay, please, you sir, can let me breathe. sit down and breathe. Let me breathe. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're going to get air to you. Get no, your no, legs in. Get your sir. legs in. We're closing this door. The cops then forced Burke into the vehicle, ignoring all his pleas and explanations regarding his medical condition. I need air. Sir, please, call an ambulance. I'm asking for an ambulance. Okay, okay, okay. You're an idiot. For crying out loud, you're a cop. You're not an ass. No way. I can't. You? You're fucking my head up. The seatbelt's in place. Please. Why would you act like this? I didn't act anyway. If you are a real police officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was trying to give you my creds. After about an hour, Burke was released without any charges. Later, Burke decided to file a civil lawsuit against the Columbus Police Department and the two officers involved in the incident, accusing them of use of excessive force and unlawful arrest. It was also reported that the trauma had such an impact on Burke on both physical and psychological levels 
that he has since moved to an administrative role within the ATF instead of field work. Our thoughts on the matter? Well, as evident from the footage without a shadow of a doubt, the officer's behavior is anything but constitutional in this case, and screams of aggression. But to give them a little benefit of the doubt, honestly, both parties involved are guilty to some extent, and Burke could have easily handled the entire altercation much more maturely by just agreeing to just surrender peacefully in the first place. For sure, a lot of drama could have been avoided. Don't you agree? Speaking of drama, get ready for the next one, as it's full of it. Though the man involved here is not from the FBI, but does have an excellent understanding of the law and is here to show how foolish and corrupt these cops can be. Mac Proctor, this guy, was parked in a private parking lot, patiently waiting for his takeout order while he is also on his delivery driver shift. Although his vehicle wasn't in an official parking spot, it wasn't obstructing traffic flow, and Mac had briefly left it unattended for about two minutes in order to pick up his food. Upon returning to his vehicle, a police officer approached him and claimed he was breaking parking regulations. All right, Mr. Proctor, uh, that is your last name. Everything okay? Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to answer anything, dude. Okay. You don't um, have to. I'll have you stand here all day. I can, get paid either way. Can you go ahead and finish your job so I can carry on? What's up with the anger, dude? I'm not angry. You're not angry? You always talk to everybody like that? I'm, I'm not angry. Oh, okay. I just want you to go ahead and wrap things up, please. Oh, okay. It seems like this officer named Diego Hernandez is getting a kick out of the situation and just simply wants to flex his power. It is true that in most cases involving cops, citizens get intimidated and reel back, giving a psychological upper hand to cops with this cop thinking they have all the power in the world and are in complete control of the situation. So it's no surprise that Hernandez here was taken aback by Mac's composure and his intelligent know-how of the related law. Mac knows that he has the absolute right to remain silent in response to the officer's inquiries, especially those that have no relevance to any criminal proceedings. All right, well, you know, I'm gonna give you a break on it, but you know what I'm saying? This isn't a parking spot, okay, dude? You're not giving me a break. You're harassing me at I'm this point. I, I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? No. Well, do you understand? Am well, I being detained? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So do you understand why I stopped you? Do I need to answer any no, more you of your questions? I'm, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. But then again, I could do this all day too. Hernandez sure has a lot of time on his hands if he is willing to do this all day. Hey, Mr. Servant Protect, don't you have bigger priorities like actually stopping people from committing a crime? Well, this proves that we judged him correctly. He does like to flex his power and bully people. I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? Uh -huh. Mr. Proctor, would you like to leave? Do I need to answer any more no, of your questions? No, no, no. Didn't he say a while back that he was detaining Mac? Jesus Christ, make up your mind already, officer. I'm not the one that's acting this way, okay? I'm just asking you to do what, you know, you know, I'm trying to give you a break here, all right? I prefer you just write me the parking ticket and let you me go. Write, okay, oh, okay. Hernandez proceeds to complete the process, but comes back again giving excuses like they have to wait for another guy to come and write the ticket. Having nothing else better to do, the officer tried to have one final crack at Mac. Hopefully I'm not keeping you from anything, am I? I don't like talking. Is everything okay? Is there any other issues or anything going on that I should know of? Do I need to answer your questions? You don't have to answer anything. I'm, I'm concerned about your well-being. Is there something wrong? Do I need to answer any of your questions? Well, if, you're, if there's something wrong, it would be nice, yeah. Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to talk to me. I'm just saying. I'm just concerned about your well-being. That's all I'm saying. Usually, we don't get people uh, hostile. I've not been hostile. Okay. Well, usually, we don't get people wanting a ticket. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through all this. I could be having my lunch right now. And you too. I have to really give to Mac for displaying such calm and collected demeanor while Officer Hernandez bombarded him with all those irritating and nonsensical questions. Hey, Mr. Proctor, can I just give you your stuff so you can leave? Can you? I can, but you're the one. I would have let you go a long time ago. I what do you... I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I'll I can leave? I'll get you right now. I just want to know that, you know, that you're okay because usually I don't get people all... This what do I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I can be on my way? you're okay. I don't need to answer any of your questions. Hey, there we go again. Jesus Christ. Now 
this is a guy seriously getting on my nerves. What is he, 12? I'm trying to say that... Uh, You're trying to display your power to me no, right now. No, I'm concerned about it. Is there a problem to be concerned about another human being? You okay. have no reason to be concerned about me. So it's okay then. You're okay then. You can hand me my documents and I can be on my way. Or we can... Fine. Okay. So, okay. So if I have your stuff, you'll be fine and taken off and you're not angry, right? Ah, the ever-wise Mac. Realizing he's not going to win this battle of wits or the law, the officer had no option but to let him go. Well, I'm going to take a chance on you, all right? Here, Mr. Proctor, um, you're about, everything's cool, all right? We're blocking traffic here to your stuff. All right, hopefully every, you have a good day. Everything works out for you, all right? Am I free to leave now? Yes, you are. Could you please step away from uh, the vehicle? Yes, I will. You have a good day. Mac was eventually allowed to go without any further problems. However, this whole incident raises some concerning questions. Why did he encounter additional issues just for exercising the Fifth Amendment? Moreover, it's quite strange this interaction occurred at all. If Officer Hernandez had noticed Mac's vehicle obstructing traffic, wouldn't it be a wiser thing to just request him to move it out of the way? But no, he had to show his authority and had to bully him. Kudos for Mac for not entertaining him and showing him the doors as he rightfully deserved. Not to mention the fact that this whole incident just proves to all of us how important it is to know about the law and handle such situations if you ever land in one. How important is it? Let's find out in the next case where a bunch of cops arrested an ex-FBI security contractor solely for the reason that he just didn't know the law enough. How you doing, sir? Good. All right. What's up? Deputy Turner with the Sheriff's Office. The reason okay. I'm stopping you is your, your plate's obstructed. Yeah. Whatever that thing's got, you got to take it off, okay? Okay. It's got to be visible within a certain distance. Right. When you went to driving school and a cop pulls you over, what they tell you? No, you pull over when it's safe to do No, you pull over immediately. Okay? Let me tell you this. That, and, and, now, you pull over immediately. Sure. Um, because I don't know what you're doing inside this car. Sure, yeah. Hiding guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. Officer safety is number one. Kind of ironic when he mentions things like safety and pullover protocols when the cop himself has no idea about the law and is lying right off the bat. You see, there's no strict requirement to pull over immediately for various reasons, including traffic obstruction and safety concerns. It's advisable to pull over as soon as it's safe to do so, prioritizing safety above all else. Also, if you find yourself in an area that feels unsafe or you're unsure whether the vehicle behind you is a genuine police car, you can activate your hazard lights and drive cautiously to a secure, well-lit, and populated area. Imagine slamming the brakes right in the middle of traffic or getting robbed, or worse, assaulted by fake cops near a dark alley, something a cop should be well-educated on before he starts throwing misinformation. But this is not the end of the cops' lives. So who are you? Former NDOC and I used to work security guards. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm a contract guard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have insurance on this thing? My partner, huh? Do you have insurance on this thing? Yeah. Your partner or what? Now my partner called me, I'm a contractor with Southwest Gas. Mm -hmm. So I gotta go over there and, and get him logged into his computer. No guns inside the car? Nah, no phone. Okay. Fast forward to a few standard questions. The cop begins to ask more targeted and detailed questions, attempting to discover evidence or information that could potentially incriminate the guy. What do you got right there up front? Hey, that's a sign. I contract. I do contract security. You contract security? So, so some of the work that you're required to have a sign. Turn it on? Okay. Yeah. Why haven't you taken the lights off of there? Yeah, I do contract work, so I have to have lights on this vehicle for something to work in. They shouldn't be that color, though. Yeah, they shouldn't be red and white, brother. Yeah, it depends on who you're contracting with. If you contract with law enforcement agencies, it's different. Which agencies do you contract with? The various ones. DOJ. Name some. A DOJ? Sure. So you have DHS? contracts? I've worked for DHS, yeah. Okay, so do you have a government ID? I have a contractor ID. Where's that? To my, uh, it's my own. Ready for the big moment? Where'd you get this? That's an issue. Federal Bureau of Investigation badge. Now the cat's out of the bag. The officers were shocked to find out who he was. However, this doesn't prevent them from going too far and exceeding their authority by searching the agent without obtaining his consent. I'm gonna read you your rights too, okay? Because you're, you're handcuffed, you know what I mean? So I feel more comfortable that way. But then, the police officer begins an unwarranted search of the agent's body and vehicle without any request or permission, violating the agent's Fourth Amendment rights. 
which safeguard against unjustified searches and seizures, an act both illegal and unconstitutional. No guns, right? No. Yeah. Inside the car? Yeah. Okay. Who, because, like I said, man, too. Put money in. Put that back in, put it in the bag, okay? So the reason you're in cuffs, okay? Unless you're a sworn officer. I know Nevada the better you Yeah, you're not allowed to have red and blues. Sure. Right, because then sure. you could easily impersonate I mean, red. a police officer. Sure. So who issued this to you? My former employer. Your former employer? Yeah. So you used to work for the FBI at I, one point? I contracted with the Department of Justice and the FBI. These officers are obviously displeased that the agent has a response for every question. So the second officer starts to ask questions he knows the man cannot answer, aiming to create a situation that might incriminate him. Since you got the badge, where's your credit at? Where's your federal credit at? I don't need federal credit because I'm not paying okay? Once more, it's crucial to emphasize that the officer's concern is primarily with the lights on the agent's car. They do not, and I repeat, do not possess the legal authority to conduct a search of an agent's person in this situation. Therefore, going into his pockets is entirely unjustified and downright illegal. Considering the whole light deal, things do seem a little shady. As the incident happened in Nevada, it's essential to note that it's against the law for a civilian to use red and blue emergency lights on their vehicle. However, this man never activated them. And when he did, it was during his official duties as a contractor with a law enforcement agency. Besides, the guy never said he was in the FBI. All he said was he worked part-time in the FBI, so he was far from impersonating a federal agent. The matter was further escalated when a bunch of senior ranking officials showed up who surprisingly turned out to be bigger fools than the two cops and decided to turn the car upside down looking for any signs of evidence. Who knows what the cops found? or planted. All the more reason for you upstanding people to be aware of your rights and the civil laws that protect you. Well, someone did say that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with the first step. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here and doesn't have ID. No kidding. This is my little Okay. What is their name? <laughs> what is their name? If you don't want to give it to me, I will arrest you for obstructing. <laughs> I'm not playing around. I understand. He tied my hand. He tried to broke my hand. Why? I'm a human being. Why, would, why did they do that? I don't know. They say, you're not supposed to be here. Um, I don't have any comments on this subject. Uh, I won't be uh, giving you anything. Okay, so you... Um... Are you refusing to give us the triggers? What comes into your mind when you hear the abbreviation ATF? The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms has fast become famous for annoying people to the point that they get cops called on them. I won't want a job like that. But today, we're going to discuss three cases where ATF agents have gotten arrested. In some cases, it is for doing their jobs and they just know how to press people the wrong way and get what's coming to them. Well, why waste time? Let's hope on to Columbus for our next first case. The date was July 7th, 2020 when a 16-year veteran agent of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Agent James Burke, went on a routine assignment to recover an illegal firearm. However, what was supposed to be a simple assignment quickly turned hostile in a very short time. As he got to the house, the residents did not open the door for him and instead reported him to the police claiming that he was an imposter impersonating a law enforcement agent. What's funny here is that Agent Burke had his ID with his law enforcement number, but the people inside felt it was all a ruse, something a guilty person would think. In most cases, when an individual is suspicious of the agent's identity, they contact the police with the law enforcement number for verification, but on this day, dispatch officers were sent instead. The police soon arrived on the scene and were nothing but hostile towards Agent Burke, which soon made the whole situation go south. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 9171 10 3. I'm a federal agent. Get on the ground! I'm a federal agent. I'm Why wouldn't you show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, okay. You didn't ask for it. 
He is at three three. Get on the ground. We'll figure it out. Drive on that ten eight. Not getting on the ground. Well, the stay where you're at. I'll stay where I'm at. Fine. Why do you got to make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting. I have no. I have no problem making this. Guys, one CV base in three 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 spots. Well. You're the reacting. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here and doesn't have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine. Fine. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Jumper, get on the ground. I'm not getting out of here. Jumper, thanks. I'm not getting out of here. pulling up. I got my ID. Do not reach for your weight. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up! Sir! Don't argue! Face down! On the ground! Face down! Now! Face down! You guys are making a big mistake. Fine, we'll settle that a second! Settle that! Face down! Now! All the way down! All the way! All the way! You got my IDs right here, left pocket. Left pocket. And we're gonna put your arm behind your back, sir. Wait a sec! Do not resist! I'm not resisting! You're acting like a no, moron! Wait a second! Stop! Wait a second! Wait a second! Officers Joseph Fee and Kevin Winchell held Agent Burke down whilst he tried to reason with them, but the officers were not having any of it. Instead, they continued to insult him like he was some low-life criminal completely disregarding his official post. Oh, and the two officers held him at gunpoint as well. Agent Burke tried to negotiate with them to get his ID from his pocket to identify him and confirm that he was not an impersonator, but Officer Fee and Officer Winchell ignored and completely disregarded him. During the scuffle, Agent Burke informed them that he had health issues and that the way they held him down would trigger some underlying health issues, but it all fell on deaf ears. To them, he was nothing but a criminal who was trying to lie about his identity and who deserved to be shocked by a taser. Wait a second, I got a medical condition. Get my license out of my pocket. We're please, getting your security for Please, please wait. No, whoa. Hold on, hold on. I'm hyperventilating. Please! Wait, please, sir. I'm, Wait, a, I, I'm not. Stop resisting. Would you now. please get my ID out of my left pocket? Stop. I'm begging resisting. you. My my wife's pregnant. Please. It's Stop right here. Resisting. Please get it. Wait, sir, on. help me up. Just hold me up. Sir, I can't do it. Wait. Sir! Stop resisting now! Please, please help me. Sir, please get my get my, my, my federal taser. creds. Get your taser out, Joe. No, don't do that, please. Sir, don't make me tase you. You're gonna get tased. Put your right no. arm behind your back. Okay. Put your right arm behind Help your back. Help me up. Now. No. Help me up. No, you're gonna stay on the ground and put your right arm behind your back. Let me breathe. Let me breathe. You can I'm breathe gonna. Just fine. I'm gonna. Ow! Ow! Don't do that. Okay. Here. My get God. Him cuffed. Get him cuffed. It is cuffed. Please get him stop. Cuffed. Get him cuffed. Please stop, oh, sir. Wait a second. Yeah. Sir. Please help me up. Please! I'm a federal agent! My God, my gun, my pistol! You have no idea what you are acting the way you are. Sir! Who the heck do you think you are acting like Nobody! I wanted you to see my goddamn creds! The lady was freaking out, for Christ's sake! Oh. Sir, please! Please! My God! Sir! Sir! Oh! Roll over, sit up. It's in my goddamn sit up. shoulder, my sit up. creds. Let him sit up, let him I sit up. My shoulder, my goddamn creds, for Christ's sake. Right there, left pocket. Left pocket, cargo pocket, please take it out. Stay up, try, don't try and sit up. I did it, I did it. Then you should have behaved the way you did. the way you did? What? I wanted you to see my creds, for Christ's sake. My God, I'm here to talk to you. No, you're the one that's in the wrong. Sir. You know if you have interaction with the police, you obey command. Sir, I was trying to get No, in. you didn't obey the command. Sir, I'm with you guys for Christ's sake. I'm a federal agent. The tensions continued to escalate as officers Fihe and Winchell searched Agent Burke for his credentials and asked him random questions like who his supervisor was, which he replied with even extra information. The struggle continued to ensue as they tried to put him in their cruiser, which he tried to resist. The two officers forcefully put him into the cruiser and ignored his requests for medical attention. Considering that he posed no threat to them, it is quite baffling that they were hostile instead. The agent faced the wrath of the angry officers like he was a common criminal. I should say, though, that hearing a federal agent cry for mercy the same way they make other offenders cry is priceless. He did try to pull out all the excuses in the book, from shouting that he was hyperventilating to saying that he had a pregnant wife. Sure. What's Woo! his name? What's your supervisor's name? Hang on a second. The sack? 
is currently John McPherson, who's on his way out to retire, who will soon be rolling. I took the mag out. My God. This is crazy. To you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Stand up. Stand I'm up. not trying to be ashamed of myself. Come out of the back of the cruiser. Say, let me see Get in the car. Get in the car. Sir, please. You got to see the back of the cruiser. Oh my God. Sir, I'm just trying to do my goddamn job. Just get in job. the car. Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No. Hold him. He's hold him. Sure. Hold him. Hold him. I'm locking the door. Relax. Hold him. Hey, guys, please. Just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car. No, we'll wait. talk later. Sir, wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. No, I was trying to give you my credit. You no. didn't let me show you it to you. Once tried. I did. Get wait, in the car. Have a seat. Wait, have a seat. wait. Now. Have a seat. Please. Wait, I gotta breathe. Okay, please, sir, let me breathe. Sit down and breathe. Let me breathe. I got. I have a medical condition. We're gonna get air tea. Get no, your no. legs in. Get your sir. legs in. We're closing this door. Sir, get your legs in. We I have need a squad rolling. This guy's cleaning his head. Sir, please call an ambulance. I'm asking. I just did. Two seconds ago. Get the car. I don't need a medic. The taser didn't bother. You just said call an ambulance. We don't need a medic. No, you don't want one. Get all the car. way in the car. Get sir, all the way in. I can't run, breathe. Run, run. Wait, sir. All the way in. Put your seat all the no, way in. No, sir, I'm begging you. Get all the way in. Wait, how did this happen? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Get in. For crying out loud, you're a cop. You had an ass. No, wait, I can't. You're fing my head up. The seatbelt's in place. Please. What the why would you act like this? I didn't act in your Please, sir, I if didn't you are please, officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was trying to give you my credit. Sir, I'm trying to give you my credit. Sir! Sir! Secure the gun in your vehicle. Secure the gun in your vehicle. Please call my supervisor. Please. We have our supervisor on the way. We'll let him handle it. The two officers began to canvass the area for witnesses who would testify to what had occurred. Both officers seemed to be now aware of Agent Burke's real identity and were now looking for evidence to make him look like the aggressor in that context. They agreed to contact his supervisor for confirmation once their supervisor had reached the scene, which I think wasn't necessary because Agent Burke had not posed any threat, at least to them. You could hear Burke shouting his lungs out, begging them to call his supervisor and sort out the whole mess. Burke then explained his side of the story to the sergeant when he came around and questioned him, whilst officers Fihe and Winchell stood by the side and watched. I bet you their hearts were pumping fast because, from the looks of things, they had not handled the situation in the best way possible. Is this guy here outside the whole time? I think so. We ought to get him as a witness. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sir, we're going to need, need you to hang around for a little bit. You got everything, right? Thank you. I'm just putting this stuff on your hood. That's fine. Whoever, whenever the sergeant gets here, we'll call his supervisor. Let them, I'm, let them handle. I'm not yeah. talking to any. It's just point. Dude, you saw how he was. He wouldn't. He wouldn't I know. Lie. No, you never. No. Don't even argue it's with him. Don't, don't, video. don't even argue with him. Just, just let him yell. Just let him yell. He's got a badge, but he wouldn't do anything. He wouldn't get on the ground. I told him over and over again on the ground. He wouldn't comply with anything. He followed us the whole time. Sir, wouldn't get in the car. If he is a real police officer, no. I had a little scratch. I'm fine. Okay. I do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did we get him all a good pat down on him and everything? Not really. We got no. 133 off him. I gave her my name. I gave her my badge number. And when the officer was out, I was taken by surprise. I got out. I looked at the door. I'm like, where? Yeah, I don't have mine. I mean, I. Yeah. The doorknob. I couldn't show him my credits. He's telling me to get on the ground. He's pointing the gun. I'm freaking out because that's not the response I expected. And I was trying to do my best. Which part did he come in? Right there. Right there. Did you run that down? Which one? Not yet. Not yet. I don't see one. As the officers tried to build a strong case against Agent Burke through witness statements, 
They went to question the alleged victim who was the wife of the man whom Agent Burke had come for. According to her, she and her kids had felt threatened by his aggressive conduct as he knocked on the door and was concerned for their safety. She said when she refused to open the door, Agent Burke threatened to wait outside the house for the whole day until someone came out. I don't know about you, but I smell a rat. This woman did not mention anything about him forcefully trying to bang down her front door, but the officers said they were told that he had tried to force down the door. Who was lying here? Well, no one ever thinks they are wrong, and that's exactly what was going on with these police officers. They constantly tried to justify their hostile actions towards Burke, placing the blame on him for not complying with what they were saying. What, what did he say to you when he saw the two? To open the door because he's a police, I tell him I can't open the door because my husband. Our officers on edge, but we were finally able to. Get the he said you have to open, open the, the door. door. I tell him I'm sorry, sorry, I can't. Um, stay with my kids. My kids Captain, start Captain, to Captain, crying Captain, because they Captain. they afraid. And okay. I tell him. You did he ever to try play. to? Did he ever try and break the door or anything like yes, that? Yes, he is still knock and he said I will stay here until evening if you don't open okay. the door because you okay. are li liar. Okay. Very good. There's a chance the sergeant yeah. might want to talk to you, so thank you very much. Thank okay, you good. Thanks, Dee. Yes. What's he got? Is that? So There's a chance she, he may even be legit. But she said he grabbed the handle and tried yeah. to push it open, yeah. though. They said it was put out as an eight that he's trying to break in. Well, no, That's she said he, he forcibly grabbed the channel. Himself. Yeah, yeah. We got what the run says. We got my video. Yeah. Oh, it's just ridiculous. It's just plain. And these days, we got people like this. I told him, I said, if you are a real police officer, basically he's just standing there like this, and Joe's looking around. He's like, no, I'm, I'm going to show you my creds. You know, Joe said, no, you need to get down. He had a gun going. I, said, I well, came up, pointed my gun. After both of us pointed our guns at him, he finally started getting on the ground, then went to go handcuff him. He's like, no, no, no. And he tried to pull like this and tried to not let us handcuff him. So we got one cuff on, we couldn't get the other one on. I had to drive step. Uh, it has to be over there in the grass, probably. That's where you were at. Yeah, I just pushed it off. It has to be over here in the grass, then. You were you were basically right here. Yeah, right here. You might have fallen down underneath there. Look, look, there's a spot underneath the grass. Right underneath the, that cartridge uh, on his taser. It looks just like this. Oh. So, you might have fallen. It didn't take long until the sergeant had the whole confusion sorted out and Agent Burke was released. Funny enough, his ID was right around his neck, but the arresting officers did not see it. Wow. Yes, maybe the outward appearance and how the agent approached the house was pretty Sue's, but surely he cannot be crucified for trying to conduct his job. Oh well, the entire neighborhood seemed to be pleased with how the police handled this case. Is it me? Or does... A lot of faults seem to be on the cop's side here. Can we say Agent Burke was not complying with the officers so he deserved what happened to him? To no surprise, Agent Burke sued the Columbus police officers for using excessive force on him whilst he was conducting his official assignment. I want to, I want to tell your supervisor what a nice job. Thank you, did. thank and you. I gotta tell him. Okay, you know, very good. The people have complained, they complain, but when they you gotta appreciate that we never you do. sure try. That's the sergeant. If you want to go and see if he can talk yeah. to you, you can, it's up to you. Yeah, all right. He may wait till he's ready. Yeah, but I bet. Thank uh, you so did much. He, have gone to he did have a gun, yes. Oh, he very well may be a real police officer, but he wasn't following protocol. Yep. I doubt it very much. Yep. I doubt it very much if he's a police officer. Thank I you. Promise you. Thank you. No way. Thank you. Oh, that sure would have made it easier. Well, I don't know if I'd have reached for it. I didn't even realize I had it on. But so, I, I don't know whose side you're on in this case, but while you think about that, this next case will help you see that ATF agents are not as innocent as they may sometimes seem as an agent swarms a woman's yard with law enforcement officers just to get to her teenage boys. But before we do that, please take a second to like the video and turn on the bell notifications so you never miss any such videos from us. Let's move on. An afternoon in Lorraine, Ohio, went from a quiet sunny day to a hostile law enforcement showdown 
when an ATF agent pulled over near a house just after three teenage boys entered the house. The ATF agent, who was accompanied by a police officer, approached the household and began to have a conversation with the mother of one of the boys who he had seen. The woman was identified as Mary Hildreth. Now, this is where it gets funny. The ATF agent demanded that the woman send out the teenage boys for questioning because he had seen them jaywalking. Yes, I know, and I'm trying so hard not to laugh too, but an agent of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms wanted to question juveniles about jaywalking in a residential area. Now that's priceless. The woman was simply not having this drama and gave the already agitated ATF agent and his police officer partner a piece of her mind. Crossover in not a crosswalk, so please send them outside for me. There is no crosswalk. 97. Send them outside. Do you think this is going to make anything better? I'm saying, he's saying. I'm saying you. Send them to the Then act like one and send the gentleman out. Okay. Okay. They, they are mine. Okay. He's a police officer. He's asking. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. What is that? Send them to the corner to get my car. So you're not going to send them out. You're not going to send them out. You're not going to send them out. So You're not going to send them out. Why? I mean, are you going to send them out or not? Because this can go an entirely different way. You want to get arrested for obstructing? We can go that route. And now you're saying this is a traffic violation? You're right. Because they're walking They're jaywalking. Okay. 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 I guess to call for backup because, quite frankly, I think he was one of those kids who would pick on other kids and then run and find backup when they were finally attacked back. Like the tattletale that he was, he pranced back to continue threatening the woman to let out her kids. Another officer arrived on the scene and took the side of his fellow law enforcement officers. He tried to negotiate with Miss Hildreth to comply, but the mother had her mind set on not giving the ATF officer the satisfaction that he had won. Soon, the house was surrounded by a group of officers, who I'm sure had been called by the tattle himself, Mr. ATF Agent. What's annoying about all this is the taxpayer's money that this group of men is wasting by not doing their job of catching the bad guy, but busy swarming on an unarmed and defenseless woman just to get to her defenseless son. If I do a traffic stop, I have every legal right to go out with them. They run in this house. I have a legal right to speak with you. I'll get bored for him. I'll get bored for him. For minors? For minors? I don't care. What's their name? What is 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 their name? If you don't want to give it to me, I will arrest you for obstructing. I'm not playing around. What is their name? I just told you my son's name is. They go and get them for jaywalking. I said for crossing over the street after they went to get their sister and they were placed in a bus. That's correct. If you could just have them come down here and talk to me, we can end this whole thing right now. They're saying they're getting them for a traffic violation and I'm impeding and they're going to arrest me because they ran. Well, clearly they didn't. I was up here doing the whole time watching. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. Hey, ma'am. Yeah, and then I told them I got cameras, so now there's like four police cars here. Well, listen, because when you start screaming it down, police. No, these are. Okay. All right. Don't tell me I was yelling. I was cool calm until he started yelling right now. Are you yelling right now? Okay. What's your name? That's okay, but I can okay. still have you. Yes. By law, you have to give me your name and address. Do you want to talk to me or no? What? He's not giving me it. He said he's ATF. He don't have to give me his name and badge number. But there's other cops around in the back of the house. They're all right now. Can you guys please off my property? Can you please get off of my property? No, because we have a legal right to do this. Last chance. What? Yeah, they're not their police. They're not their police officers around the freaking house. They need to get shot. Right? So we're trying to do our job. Right? 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 So we're trying to do our job. We don't want your son or any of their friends. Can you let me talk to you, lady? <laughs> so they see that they try to find some kids. They keep walking, walking, son. I personally...
Ms. Hildreth came outside where she was met with the view of at least 12 large men in her yard. To think that all this ruckus was for three teenage boys who had not committed any crime. She began to have a conversation with whom she thought was superior and explained her side of the story as well as how uncomfortable the sight of an army of scary looking men in her yard was. The officers stepped back from the property, but let's face it here, what was done had already been done. They had invaded her yard in their numbers just to intimidate her and her boys. Conversations continued to go back and forth amongst the senior officer and the other officers on the scene, whilst Mr. ATF agent ran back to the car to get Ms. Hildreth summons for obstruction. But honestly, let's be fair here. Was all this even necessary? Is the ATF now enforcing jaywalking too? My head is spinning with so many questions right now, but for what it's worth, these federal agents should know when to draw the line. Just because they have some power, does not mean they should then abuse it on innocent, unsuspecting mothers and children. Her summons was obstructing and How is it obstruction when she is the mom of a minor child? Y'all gotta talk to her. Y'all can't y'all ain't allowed to talk to him if the mom is present, you gotta talk to the mom. Because he's a minor. Come on, bro. Okay, if he's a minor, you're not allowed to talk to the minor. You gotta talk to the mom. You can interview him and let say mom say no, and you gotta talk to the mom. And she said no, then yes. How is she impeding on, on, on your investigation? Where they clearly walked like this and walked up. Here comes these officers. And I'm here to answer your By the time he was out the car, my front door was already shut, and my son and them were already in the house. Give me a piece of paper. I can get the inside. And they were going around the house. The police. I was already in the door, like, what's the problem? And they had to. Give me a pen and paper so I can get these guys. What you said to me when I asked you about the camera? Come on, bro. Give me these I got it on both ends. I got it on both ends. Nah, I ain't nobody seen the car. No, we're We want bad numbers in the What exactly you are? These ATF agents seem to look crazier with each case if you ask me. Our last case today features not only an ATF agent, but a DEA agent as well who illegally detained a foreign man in a bar after alleging that he did not have enough paperwork to be in America. No wonder these guys are slowly becoming the most hated bureau yet. They have now resorted to racism. What's funny about this with the level of crime and gun violence in the country constantly increasing ATF agents have the time to detain people over travel documents instead. Dan Lajak of the DEA and Donald Kopchak of the ATF were arrested that night with multiple charges, and it turned out that the alleged illegal victim, DART terrorist, was a U.S. citizen who had arrived as an Eritrean refugee. 
I guess this case proves that a little too much to drink can land you in heaps of trouble. At the bar, what would make them, why do you think they would think you're well, illegal or? Yeah, I was sitting, watching. Mind your own business. Cold whatever. They just look at me, they ask me, where are you from? Yeah. Okay, my origin is Eritrea. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. No, you are illegal. How you be here? I just came into work. I have to be here until Monday. I'm trying to explain. Show us your ID. Who you are? Can I show you my ID? Yeah, we are working with federal law, blah, 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 and then he showed me something with uh, federal or whatever. Okay, I'm from Dallas. Look, he tried to talk, take my ID. No, I can't give you. Then they just keep. What do you okay, I will call police. Only police can check me. You said that, or did yeah, they? Yeah, I said okay. that. I can't show anybody my ID. Yeah. Okay, I can tell who am I, where I come from. Yeah. That's it. They took by force. They did all this. They took from here, from here, from here. All my stuff. See. They took everything. all your stuff out of your pockets. All everything. What they else? Make me what fall. else? They grab your arms. A pain here. They a pain here. Why? Not, oh, oh, why? No, no. I just, I want to ask them, yeah, why? Why, why, why they make, if you see someone, maybe they don't like me, whatever, or I'm maybe different. Yeah. And they see me from here, they just came in, you know what, hey, we're gonna punch you, we're gonna hit you, we're gonna blah, blah. Oh, no, I don't want that. I told you, like, you ask me where I'm from, my origin, everything, why I'm here. I'm not illegal. If I'm illegal here, only police can ask me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. They told me we are federal, blah, blah, blah. He showed me a lot of stuff. Federal, okay, I see, okay. Okay, then I'm trying to call police. To sum up, ATF agents are not all bad guys as it is often put out. Some of them are hard-working men and women who are just trying to do their jobs even though at times it's pretty sus. However, it is those few that taint the name of the entire agency. These go the extra mile just to trash the name of the AFT with their actions. I hope they are apprehended accordingly. What do you think about the ATF agents we featured today? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best, so watch it and find out if it is right.